I was looking at the world from a genome-centric view, the collection of genes that put together to, to lead to any one species. But as we traveled around the world uh, trying to look at the diversity of biology, we came up with larger and larger collections of genes. When we look at cells as machines, uh, it makes them very straightforward uh, in the future to design them uh, for very unique utility. So I, I think all these speak against uh, that one quotation. It's more than just saying that you can, uh, you, you can pick up a chromosome and put it in somewhere else. It is pure information. You could put it into a printed book. You could send it over the internet. You could store it on a magnetic disk for a thousand years and then uh, in a thousand years time with the technology that they'll have then, it will be possible to reconstruct uh, whatever living organism was, was here now. What has happened is that genetics has become a branch of information technology. Uh, it is pure information, it's um, digital information, it's precisely the kind of information that can be translated digit for digit, byte for byte, into any other kind of information. Biology is the ultimate in nanotechnology, uh, and it can now be digitally designed uh, and reconstructed. What I do have a problem with is the possible um, unforeseen practical consequences of some of the sorts of things, not just you are doing, but many other people are doing. I suspect that the phrase playing God is actually a kind of, it's a bit like the boy who cried wolf, because accusing a scientist of playing God is obviously stupid. But what is not obviously stupid is accusing a, a scientist of endangering the future of the planet by doing something that could be irreversible. Evolution is now uh, man-made. It's, it's cultural rather than uh, Darwinian, uh, open source. We see major species evolution was from species taking on new chromosomes. When they take on a new chromosome, it's like adding a new uh, DVD full of software to your computer. It instantly changes the capabilities and the robustness of what you can do. That Darwinian selection means one species goes extinct and another species take, takes over. That is not Darwinian selection. That is species extinction. It's a totally different kind of process. Um, the viruses you're talking about, the bacteria you're, you're talking about, are kind of free spirits who are out there in the sea and out there in the air. But there's another whole class of them who have not agreed, but who have come together in gigantic clubs, gigantic societies, which is you and me. I'm certain we will find bacterial life on Mars, uh, whether it's actively replicated or not still is a, is a question. We will find life as a universal concept. Anywhere we find highly intelligent life, I think we will find it's a design concept, it's an electronic concept, it's an information concept. Uh, we can transfer life across the universe as digital information, somebody else could in their laboratories build that genetic code and replicate it. So uh, uh, perhaps publishing my genome on the internet had more implications than I thought. We have not yet created an, a cell driven by a man-made chromosome. Uh, based on the chromosome transplant experiment though, uh, we know that that is definitely possible. Uh, I'm hopeful it will happen this year. In response to Craig Venter today, I am prepared to change my mind if he gives a better answer to my question <laughs> about molecular taxonomy. Maybe now is not the time to do it, but I'm on the brink of changing my mind, but I remain highly skeptical. I certainly would um, think it highly, highly unlikely that there's anything like uh, a soul that survives the death of the brain.